The, the coho salmon is, for us, the canary in the coal mine. When the salmon is struggling, it's telling us that we have trouble with our, with our ecosystem, with our environment. And so that's our focal point where we're working on keeping that salmon alive because it's, it's going to make life better for all of us, all the living things that inhabit this, this area. So this is the Lagunitas Creek. It's about 45 minutes north of the Golden Gate Bridge along Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. We used to see you know, tens of thousands of salmon run up this creek every winter, and now on a good year we see about 500. So far this year we've seen only 100. We have the saying that salmon grow on trees. When they come up here and spawn, um, they've been living in the ocean for about three to four years, and they're, they're huge fish. And when they die, their nutrients get deposited all around the stream and all around the riparian uh, area and, and the forest in general and the trees really thrive on that and some scientists years ago found that um, redwood trees that grew along salmon streams on average grew taller and bigger than redwood trees that grew away from salmon streams. The population of Lagunitas Creek coho salmon has declined by about 95 percent of its historical average. It's, it's kind of a multi-fold reason why they why their populations have declined so much. One large part is uh, dam construction. And in this watershed in particular, there's um, two major dams. Um, Peter's Dam that dams up Kent Lake, and then um, the dam on Nicasio Reservoir, uh, both of which limit the available spawning habitat um, for the salmon by about 40%. There are lots of other factors, including urbanization, that have had a really big impact on the fish. Come roads and roofs and cars and fertilizers and pollution. All those factors kind of contribute to decreased water quality. Prolonged drought can really have a serious effect on, on vegetation um, you know, for, for the long-term future. So if you know, this year's drought we might not see its effect uh, for a couple of years. So this is the main stem San Geronimo Creek, which is a tributary to Lagunitas Creek. And this creek and its surrounding tributaries on average see about 40 to 60 percent of all the spawning in the entire watershed. And uh, you can really see uh, the impacts that urbanization have had on this creek. Uh, historically, you know, there used to be a wide meandering floodplain here where the stream um, was really sinuous, it was meandering, um, there's a lot of forest canopy, um, and now uh, the stream's been channelized and really um, poses a real risk to the structures here. Welcome to the Nimbus Fish Hatchery here on the banks of the American River in Rancho Cordova. We are here viewing the steelhead spawning of our steelhead trout at the hatchery. This hatchery was built in 1955 at the same time as Nimbus and Folsom dams. And those dams were built by the Bureau of Reclamation to control flooding on this river and to provide a steady source of water for the communities springing up downriver. Unfortunately, at the same time that they did that, they cut off access to most of the historic spawning range of the Chinook salmon and steelhead trout. So the hatchery was established with a goal of producing 4 million salmon and 430,000 steelhead trout every year and releasing them back into the river to sustain and maintain that population at a healthy level. Once the salmon have made their way to the top of the fish ladder, they gather in a holding tank there. We use a mechanical crowder, which basically puts a fence down into the water and pushes the fish forward and herds them through a door into the hatchery building to the spawning floor. They're in a basket there and we administer an electric shock, which is an, um, a way of putting them to sleep basically. It anesthetizes the fish so that they will not be struggling or suffering and also so that they will be easier for the staff to handle. We are talking about some pretty big fish here. Uh, once they are unconscious, they're brought up to the, the sorting tray and they'll separate the males from the females. It's easy to tell the difference because the males actually develop a hooked jaw when they return to the river to spawn as well as sort of a hump on their back. So they look much more aggressive than the females and the females will have a big round belly full of eggs. Um, the workers will go through and feel each female's belly to determine whether those eggs are ripe and ready to be spawned. If they are ripe, the belly will feel soft and eggs will be expelled when the worker squeezes the belly. If the belly still feels hard, no eggs are coming out, she's not ripe yet and that fish will be returned to the water 
either in a holding tank or to the river for trout to uh, wait a few more days for those eggs to ripen up. These fish have been returning to this river for millions of years and they are part not only of the, the food chain but of the greater ecosystem as well. The nutrients that their bodies provide to the soil nurture all the plant life and insect life as well in this community. So when we look around us, around this river, we're seeing a habitat that has been in part created by these fish. You know, I want to leave this world better than I found it. And um, I think I have a great opportunity here to protect and um, you know, serve the natural world and, and get this uh, endangered species um, well protected and, and help its populations and help this overall forest and community. And um, you know, when we, when we help the land, we help the people. And I, I'm a strong believer in that. So uh, that's why I'm here.